four combinations to show what the move is. This is a stick. Follow the green with your eyes to follow what the nunchucks will be doing when they have tension in them and are straight out like a stick would be. So, um, <coughs> follow the green with your eyes again. Green is pointed towards opposite side of my body, straight out perpendicular to the wall, nice. Parallel to the floor. Swing up, cross my face, point to the outside. Come back behind my body because my wrist can no longer keep rotating in front of my body. Dip down, cross the back of my head, point out again, dip down again, and come up. As we come up, we're going to catch, so it'll look like this. Cross my face, dip down, over, dip down again, and catch. When we do it fast, it looks like. Except that things don't come flying off of our nunchucks, hopefully as we do this. How does that relate to the moon wave and what does this look like with a pair of nunchucks? Well, with a pair of nunchucks, first of all, it'll look like this. How does it relate to the moon wave? When we put this all together, maybe I'll mirror it for you because I just showed you in one direction and it would be me to change that now. It'll look like this. It's just a nice way of getting into the moon. So, after we catch behind our back, <coughs> with your new hand, for me now that's this one, I'm going to let go with my old hand. With my new hand, I'm going to swing out and straight towards my face, and then re-catch, okay? You can also swing down from over the top, but if you do that, it might launch you into kind of a premature moon wave, because your thumb might cause the down swinging chuck to pivot, all right? And that already kind of spoils the effect if you bring this down and then up again and then down again. It's already kind of like common iron effect maybe, if you're a nerd. Um, it kind of ruins it, in my humble opinion. But anyways, it'll look like this from my dominant hand's perspective. And there's the movement. So this is kind of a way of loading in. Um, and then you can continue to do whatever trick you want out of it. Now, a, a way to change the moon wave, and really, honestly, this is kind of a new trick. Um, but it's so immediately out of the moon wave, and it only slightly alters the ending, that I'll feature it in here instead of in a new tutorial video. Maybe I'll also make a new tutorial video later, but it would be very quick, because we already know moon wave. So, moon, it's locked up. When we do the wave, we're going to let go and let the nunchucks fall. The nunchucks, if you think about what's going on, they're locked in moon, wave, they unlock, they come up over the top, if we let them do whatever, and we're not still holding on to them. The nunchucks will cross each other once, and then they'll fall straight down. It'll look like this again, here, one sec. Moon, wave, cross each other once, and fall. Except we're going to catch them, both palms facing up, looks like this. Moon, wave, catch. And from there, I can rip into wrist rolls, I can do whatever I want. You will learn a different um, thing that I was about to show you that would stop myself, and maybe my uh, failure stopped me as well, um, later. But anyways, a third thing with the moon wave that we can do is load the moon wave, and then instead of firing as we normally do, we can kind of change the trajectory of the moon wave. Sorry, is this the second or third? No, this is the third. No, this is the fourth thing, right? So we can change the trajectory of the moon wave. That's not very hard to understand. But instead of just changing the trajectory, we can load the moon wave, then change where we're coming, the direction that we're coming in, not fire the moon wave, and instead strike. So try loading moon wave, coming back behind your head, freeing your thumbs, we're making it look like they're still locked in there, perhaps. For your thumbs, and slash. And those are four combos. Into or out of the moon. I realized that that was only three combinations into or out of the moon, and not four. The fourth, I just realized, is actually really complex, and I'm going to wait and just make another direct tutorial video on it. Sorry about that. Start in hand zero, so this is your initial swing. This is this rotor pass um, evolution, or rotor pass combination. That's why we're starting with a prep split, right? Because the uh, rotor pass generally, right, is a front grip passing to a back grip, passing back to the front grip, right? But we start in a prep swing with front grip, passing to a front grip. Now we're doing the rotor pass, front grip, back grip, back grip, 
to front grip, this is my front grip, to back grip, this is my back grip, right? So, we will be doing with our back grip hand a back to back wrist roll, catch, pass back to our back grip hand. Back to back wrist roll, catch in front grip, pass back to our back grip hand. Back to back wrist roll, catch, and etc. How are we doing that catch? Maybe some of you guys haven't done this catch before, but it's pretty similar to just the regular rotor pass catch. We're doing the wrist roll, and then we are with our free hand crossing the same side, palm facing up. Now, holding the, the nunchucks on opposite side, try a back-to-back -back wrist roll, and catching the free chuck as it flops directly and nicely into your hand. Pass, wrist roll, catch. Pass, now we're in our wrist roll hand. Wrist roll, catch. So the same hand should be doing the back-to-back -back wrist roll every single time. Right, back-to-back, -back, opposite hand, catch. Bring it back to the wrist roll hand, back to back, catch. Load the wrist roll hand, wrist roll, new hand. Load the wrist roll hand, wrist roll, new hand. Okay, so ultimately it will look like, which as you can see is a little bit more dynamic than just, and then also at a slightly different pace too. It's kind of that stop and go feel that we learned in our one, two, one, two version of figure eight wrist rolls instead of just always coming into back and forth and back and forth right it's kind of the same thing but now with rotor pass this can also be done by mixing a front to front in instead of um, always necessarily using back to backs that would look something like so i'll start with my other hand it would look more like that but that's one way to evolve the rotor pass. I cannot really afford to toss very high or do very wide prep swings in here, but I can show some version of evolutions of tosses. So, so far we learned... So far we learned um, outside to inside and inside to outside tosses, right? So outside to inside, like this, and then we catch somehow. Again, I'm not doing like a crazy amount of spins in here just because I don't really have the space to do something that powerful. And inside to outside, snatch down with the, <clears throat> with the opposite hand, right? Um, and you can come up over your shoulder, you can come up across the opposite shoulder, and then back down here. Or you can continue doing some sort of thing here, maybe to rotor pass, etc. Um, but in either case, the, the reason why we uh, switched hands when we were doing that uh, inside to outside toss, but our logic back then was we, it's easier to catch nunchucks snatching down, right? We're, nunchucks are spinning one way, we're riding along with the momentum instead of absorbing an existing momentum and then trying to... Uh, right, so if nunchuck, if this nunchuck ignore the one under my armpit, is spinning this way. There are two ways that I can grab it with the same hand, right? Um, I can kind of be a block and try not to kill this momentum by absorbing and giving in to its momentum. Or I can try to kind of hitch a ride on it. And um, basically in this version, your hand controls the non more. In this version, whatever the non was doing before, whatever sort of momentum it had, you're forced to obey and pull it along at about the same speed. It's kind of hard to uh, disobey the nunchuck much, and because um, if you accidentally pull faster than the nunchuck was coming in, you the nunchuck doesn't catch up with your hand. If you accidentally pull slower, the nunchuck was swinging fast, and then you kind of break its momentum, obviously, and the shock will um, travel down the chain or cord, and it'll show in the negative chuck. Okay. So, generally speaking, it's easier to snatch down when non-trucks are spinning. Um, and from the top of a non-truck that is also spinning down. That is not the only way to catch non-trucks though. You can also spin... Um, if the non-trucks are spinning this way, you can also snatch up on the, the upward spinning chuck, right? It would look something like that. Then we can continue the momentum running this way. I 
Also, another part of the reason why I showed you catches the way that we did before was so that we would always end in a front grip. Um, because front grips are usually more comfortable. But also get comfortable with back grips, right? There are still things we can do with back grips. Even if you're only comfortable starting new tricks from a front grip, um, rather than a back grip, you know back to front wrist roll so you can easily change, right? Just like that. Into a front grip now for the time. Now I'm in the front grip. Okay? So just get comfortable with wrist rolls catching in the new ways, right? So that was an outside to inside toss with hand A and an upwards catch with hand B. Then we can also then do inside to outside toss with hand A and an upwards catch also with hand A. That would look, that's a bit more complex. We're gonna have to kind of start here, swing out and then dart around and grab it. But or not really, I guess. One more time. It's again hard with this limited space, but... Okay, this time I'll try to roll it into a, a back to front to show you, but... Okay, it's a little bit difficult here, but I think you get the idea, I hope. Maybe I'll allow it to do one more rotation before catching this time. There we go. Okay, yeah, so if the notch is spinning this way, you don't have to snatch down on the downward spinning chuck, you can also snatch up on the upward spinning chuck. With uh, inside the out wrist rolls, if you're catching, snatching upward, now the inside the outside ones are the ones where you have to switch hands. And if you're uh, tossing, did I say inside to out? That was outside to in. Outside to in, you have to switch hands if you're snatching upwards. And inside to out, you have to uh, use the same hand if you're snatching upwards. Maybe you have to, yeah. Do that one again. There we go. Okay. And those are some ways to at least make um, inside to outside and outside to inside tosses, I pointed the wrong way both times, more versatile so you're not limited to doing the same things over and over again with them. There you go.